Greetings fellow statistic warriors, my name is Robert Zazalfo and I'm going to show you how to conduct a one sample chi-square using SPSS. The data set I'm using today is, um, is from uh, the CDC, the YRBSS, the Youth Risk Behavior Surveillance Survey. The data set is available online. Um, there are instructions on how to get that data set. Go to my website, 30bmi.com. I'll take you through that. Anyway, this is a very robust data set. There are over 16,000 cases and well over 200 different variables. So we're going to keep it um, focused over here. I cleaned up the data set a little bit. I have data at the interval level and that at the nominal level. Before we get started with how to technically conduct a one sample chi-square, it's very important to understand why. Why are you using a one sample chi-square? And the reason for that is because you're going to measure, excuse me, you're going to analyze data that's measured at the nominal level. Um, nominal or ordinal level data. In other words, it's categorized. And when data is categorized, then you can use the statistical technique of one sample chi-square. One sample chi-square is going to look at frequencies or counts and analyze whether the count uh, the actual count differs or not from the expected count or hypothesized count. If you are not clear how to recode interval level level data where the data is an actual number, if you're not clear on how to recode interval level data to categorical or nominal level data, on the web page that links you to here, 30bmi.com, on the statistical techniques, I, I also have a, a quick tutorial on how to do that. It's very important. But let's go forward from here, where I've already have um, obese, obese as defined by um, percentiles of BMI categorized into obese or not obese already working with categorical data. You could use look at overweight, whether overweight or not overweight. Categories of race and ethnicity. Age. These are categories. Sex. And of course grade. All categorical data. That's where we're using a one sample chi square. So, we start with going under analyze, come to non parametric test. Uh, if you select this one sample, you'll get a dialog box. They'll try to walk you through the different, by asking you different questions. You can choose to do chi-square test, observe probabilities to hypothesize. I'm going to cancel this. I like using the the legacy dialogs. It gives you more control over what it is that you want to run as a report. I'm going to look at the categorical and nominal uh, categorical nominal or interval or ordinal level data where it's ordered categories. I'm not going to look at interval level data because interval level is not appropriate to run in a one sample chi-square. We're looking at these categorical data. Obesity, overweight, race, age. Drag them over if you want. Click it if you want to do that. You can select it, click the arrow, it moves over to test variable box. Or you can just drag it over. Okay. Options. Statistical summaries, uh, descriptive statistics are, are useless with categorical data. There, there's no meaning to mean 
median, or any of those descriptive statistics. You don't need to click that. If you click it, it's not going to give you anything useful. So continue. Very simple dialog box for SPSS. Hit OK. No, wait. Expected values. Um, if you're doing a scientific test you, where you had a specific value defined for each of the variables, as far as percentages of, fre of the frequency, then you could specify that in here. You just click values and you specify the uh, the percentile, the percentages you expect for the frequency to be distributed. We don't have any hypothesized value, so I'm going to click all categories equal, and you'll see where that has uh, an effect in a moment. Test variable list, all categorical data, nominal or ordinal. Click OK, and SPSS will crunch out a report. Here are your chi-square tests, frequencies. Let me widen this out for you. Using a one sample chi square test, what, it, what it's giving us are values with categories. Look, it's still processed. It's a very large data set. Okay. Expect, observed and expected uh, counts of obesity. The, act, the exact frequency right here in the observed counts for all of these categories, categories of overweight or not overweight, obese or not obese, race, ethnicity, age, sex, grade. Within SPSS, when we selected that the, that the expected counts were equal, this is where, where it shows right here. We expected that half Half of the sample would be obese, the other half would be not obese, where the expected counts were just probability based. Well, there's a 50-50 chance of being obese and non-obese. Um, so that's where the expected counts come from. That's where SPSS mathematically comes up with the number. It's all probability based when we say that the expectations or the expected counts were equal. If you had hypothesized specific expected values for each of these, then you would have inputted it earlier for specifically, and then that would be indicated here. What well, we don't have is not, uh, not we a scientific experiment. We have actual hypothesized counts or expected values. So when we selected expected values are equal, this is, this is what it produces. It's not as meaningful because we very well know that we don't expect there to be equal numbers of Hawaiians as white as far as race goes within the high school. But the observed counts is something that's useful. So you get the actual frequencies. Now, one sample, one sample chi-square is not the most useful tool because we're only comparing one sample and one variable at any given time. So even if we did have um, articulated in writing or put into SPSS what our expected or hypothesized counts were, I'm still only looking at one, cat one um, variable at any given time. So we could expect that there are higher higher numbers of obese or not obese children in the high school. And that would be the, the, the limit to the analysis that a one sample chi-square chi gives us. Because we're not going to be able to look at it anywhere else. Our expected and observed counts of overweight or not overweight. If we expected that half the students in the high school would be 
either overweight or not overweight, well, then we could compare observed against expected. Even if we had a hypothesized value here, we could still compare actual counts to the hypothesized or expected counts of overweight high school students. What the one sample chi-square does not allow us to do is compare rates of obesity or frequencies of obesity counts within categories of race, age, sex, or grade. Therefore, within this study, the one sample chi-square is uh, rather limited in usefulness. The only thing that's useful here is when we're talking about childhood obesity, right here, bingo, counts of obesity. That's it. The rest of this has really limited value as far as a statistical technique. It has value if you take one, more than one variable at a given time and look at it. But that's not a one sample chi-square. That would, that's a contingency table analysis or an SPSS across tabs. And what I highly recommend is that you look at a, a uh, tutorial. I'm, I'm going to prepare a tutorial and post it on the website, 30bmi.com, where I take this one sample chi-square one step further where, I'm, where I look at obesity within these other categories, race, age, sex, using a contingency table analysis. So I recommend you click on that link if you have interest in that or you know, go to YouTube and there are many other uh, tutorials on how to conduct a contingency table analysis. But as far as a one sample chi-square, that's about it. There's not, there's not much to gain using this tool as far as my research goes. Um, and as far as uh, a study of more than one variable would go, a one sample chi-square is, that's it. Limited in usefulness. I said it, I don't like this test. There you have it. It's official. I don't like the one sample chi-square because it's very, very limited. And that's it. The one sample chi-square.